Well, good to see you, Tim. Um, I think we'll hop in. I'm going to take you around the farm and just show you the reason why I've named all the paddocks after uh, the great uh, Sweatnam, well, Sweatnam stallions and Sweatnam racehorses, which we've had on this uh, over the, 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 the dynasty of whatnot. <laughs> Do about six or seven, oh, well, about ten or twelve of these. Glastonbury, he was a very expensive yearling, lovely grey horse. He won the Metropolitan, but there's a little bit of sort of um, uh, controversy in the lead up race. He got stuffed and he was four to one favourite for the, for, the, for, the, for the Metropolitan. He then drifted out to 33 to one. Grant Cooksley rode him, Hayes trained him, came down the outside and basically won the Group 1 um, Group One Metropolitan. I was in America at the time with my mother who wasn't too well, and I was speaking to Mr. Coles, who was my boss, and I was saying, what's all that cheering and booing in the background when I was on the phone listening to, to, to the race? He said, oh, don't worry about that, Adam. And really what happened was that the crowd thought that we had rigged the race and uh, booed us off course. And David Hayes and Duncan Grimley, who was a part owner of Glastonbury, who actually named his farm after Glastonbury, they got uh, escorted off Ramwick by the police because they thought we'd rigged the race, which obviously we hadn't. It was just a change of, uh, change of, uh, uh, just change of fortune with the horse. Allege won the Arc de Triomphe in 1977 and 1978 with Lester Piggott on board. Front running horse, by hoist the flag, then went back to America and stood in America as a very successful stallion over there. That's a, that one. Does that sort of make sense? Stormbird. He was born in America, son of Northern Dancer, champion two-year-old in England, and also sire of the great Stormcat. Controversy with this horse was the fact that he was favorite for the Dewhurst, trained by Vincent O'Brien, and a disgruntled, well, a disgruntled employee uh, basically broke into the, the stall uh, before the race and cut off his mane and his tail. And uh, we had to find a, uh, a fake tail for the horse because you weren't allowed to run him in a race without a proper tail. But um, he duly won the race. Basically, he was retired as a late three-year-old. But there was a bit of controversy that someone had actually come in and cut off his ta tail and mane. So, uh, yeah, Stormbird. Our Paddy boy. He was brought out of New Zealand as a tried horse. Paddy Payne trained him, came across and won uh, the derby in, uh, in, uh, in Sydney. Funny story about this one is when Paddy Payne sold the horse to my father and Colin Hayes, he phoned up and said, listen, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a pony which needs to go with our Paddy boy or else he won't come onto the track. And as Paddy quoted, he said, not only did I sell him the fastest horse in, in uh, Australasia, but I also sold him the slowest horse in Australasia. Blevick, winner of the SARS Produce and also the VRC Derby. I'll never forget this horse because I actually named him. Trained by Colin Hayes. Uh, he basically, we sold him to South Australia. He was a very successful sire. But uh, from the money which we received from Blevick, we then managed to purchase some more property here and more land at the time. Uh, he was a very successful stallion and um, he was a great racehorse. Ha ha. Ha ha. We bred ha ha. Um, Rory's jester out of very droll, Philly. Gay Waterhouse purchased her at the sales for John Singleton and she won the Golden Slipper. And of course, John Singleton likes naming the horses the way he does, like Delightful, like uh, Belle de Jour, which is good eye in French, and Ha Ha, it was at that era. Very good, well done, John. <music> Assert, story behind this one was my father's uh, great agent, P.P. Hogan, who has just won the English Derby in 1982 with Golden Fleece and my father was going for the celebration at uh, Annabelle's with all the team and P.P. Hogan said listen I want to go to, uh, to France there's an Irish River cult in the sail there at Arcana and I'd prefer to do that rather than celebrate so they went, he went across with David, David O'Brien 
and uh, purchased this Irish River Colt. And basically it was a cert who was a champion in himself in Ireland. As I say, two classics he won over there, but um, a great horse and became a good stallion. El Grand Senor, arguably one of the greatest race horses my father ever raced in the team. Won the 2000 guineas, was the shortest price favorite for the English Derby. And the horse was basically sold if he won the English Derby. The great Pat Edry rode him. 1984, Pat had already won two years previously on, uh, on Golden Fleece for us and basically hit the front and he just got nutted down by Secreto, who was trained by David O'Brien, who was Vincent O'Brien's son, came down the outside, also another son of Northern Dancer. <laughs> Marauding, won the 1987 Golden Slipper. Um, my father had four runners in that race, and Marauding carried the Kelly's colours, because it was the fourth colours, trained by uh, Brian Mayfield Smith. So a bit of controversy with Marauding winning, winning the Golden Slipper in 1987. With those runners my father had, the four of them, uh, he also had uh, uh, a filly in it called, uh, um, not Magic Flute, but, uh, uh, oh, God. I'd, I'd, I'd said, tell the story all the frigging time. Um, and it was called Military. Uh... Few moments later. Okay, I'm rolling. Let's get into my rolling race record. Race record. Midnight Fever. No, was it Midnight Fever? Much, much, much later. Uh, whoops, marauding spot wrong. M marauding. Eventually. Marauding beat Lig on arms. Snippets was in the same race. Uh, he had postage due, Midnight Fever. Did I say Midnight Fever? I can't remember if I did say Midnight I said Midnight Fever. There we go. Uh, and anyway, not down Midnight Fever. And uh, because father owned Midnight Fever, there wasn't going to be a steward's inquiry. Uh, Marauding would have always kept the race, of course. But um, basically, Marauding turned into a very successful stand-in for all of us. El Prado. The reason why I'm showing you El Prado is he was by Sadler's Wells. Lovely grey horse, but he also produced Medaglia Dior, who produced Vancouver, who won the slipper. But my father raced him in Ireland with Vincent O'Brien, and he was a pretty successful racehorse, and then, of course, went to America. We sold him to America. Basically, as I say, produced Medaglia Dior, who was one of Dali Godolphin's greatest stallions they had standing in, in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> Danehill Dancer, he stood here at Swetnam in his, uh, in his first few years. I've got to say, the reason why I'm showing you this horse, because he was a son of Danehill. He won two Group 1s as a two-year-old, and he was beaten into second place in the Dewhurst uh, uh, in England. I mean, obviously, with Danehill's success in the slipper, his first success has been with Dan Zero and Flying Spur, winning out from his first crop that um, really set Dane Hill a light down here. And he himself is one of the great, great um, uh, broodmare sires. But of course, for down here in Australia, he is the sire and he was conceived at Swetnam of Choisir. The Minstrel, probably for me where it all started and my father. The Minstrel won the 1977 English Derby. And Hulk Grove and the Mitchell coming into the final furlong now. Lester Piggott is on the Mitchell and he's going to win the Mitchell. The Mitchell wins the English Derby in 1977. Hulk Grove and Willie Carson second. I was 11 years old. I was playing cricket at Lugrove in England and great pal Peter Stanley came in and he's Lord Derby's son and he said, Adam, your father has just won the Derby, English Derby, with the Minstrel. And um, that really started my father's, I mean, amazing, epic, sort of legendary uh, status in the, in the industry. And it was really because of the minstrel and it really started the whole uh, Sankster, Vince O'Brien, John Magna, Coolmore episode of the first chapter. First cuts are always very good. <laughs> the 
Iska, who is she out of? Iska, 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 who f was she out of? I do know what Iska's out of, and I fucking can't fucking remember. Iska, named after a little uh, island off Sicily. Uh, she was a homebred by Rory's Jester out of My First Star, who was by Kerlian. Both those two were homebreds for my father's out of Ireland. Iska, she was an incredibly speedy filly, trained by Peter, Peter, Peter Hayes. Um, she won the Lightning, then she backed it up and she won the, the, the New Market. And she just had terrific speed. Uh, Greg Charles rode her. Sadly, she, she died as a broodmare. Uh, giving fall to a flying, flying spur colt, and uh, we never saw the best of her. She had great memories uh, of Peter Hayes, the late Peter Hayes, and my father and, and the team. But um, yeah, homebred Iska, very proud of her. Mapilia Heights, New Zealand raced and bred by Sir Tristram. Mapley stud, we owned it together with the Davidson family, came across in the late, late to early 80s. Third in the Melbourne Cup, amazing family from, from New Zealand, all that Battle Heights, all that Heights family, and she was, she was arguably one of the, one of the great, uh, great mares. So, yep, Mapley Heights. Capstad is very close to my heart. He was, no, sorry, let's start again. Capstad, he's very close to my heart, this horse. He, when I was um, on my gap year, I was sent from England after I left Harrow School to go to Cambridge Stud to work under Sir Patrick Hogan and all his team there. And on the 2nd of November, 1984, we fall down Capstad at two o'clock in the morning. <coughs> Capstad was finally sold. He was sold to New Zealand and obviously produced some very good stallions, uh, sorry, very good racehorses. And um, he was a little bit subfertile, but Capstad, very close to my heart. Not really coming off there. Celtic Swing. He won the. Uh, no. Celtic Swing. He was a stallion which we shuttled from, uh, from Ireland. His claim to fame was he's a star of Takeover Target, and of course, Celtic Swing stood here at Swetnam, and Takeover Target was conceived on this property. Sukara. Interesting story about her. She was a Chesham, Chesham winner at Royal Ascot and second in the Moy Glare for my father. She was by Roberto. And this mare was one of the four mares packaged up in 1980s, the early 1980s, to sell to the new force in racing at the time was Prince Khalib Abdullah out of Saudi Arabia. And Sukra, Basically, her claim to fame is her pedigree is absolutely stacked with black type, but also was a foundation mare for Judmont, producing Dan Silly and Intercontinental, Jean's Elysee, Heat Hayes, and that sort of famous dynasty, which has continued on by Judmont. Canonized, I'm showing you canonized because um, he came second in the Golden Slipper. He won the first Adelaide Millions, the XL Millions down there. He was actually bought by, by David Coles, my, my, my mentor, uh, as a yearling and trained by the Hayes family. And the reason why I have put him on here because at the time the horse which won the Golden Slipper tested positive to lignocaine, which is now a banned substance. My, my father said that it was no point going to the stewards to um, put a steward's inquiry out after the horse tested positive. Um, so it, he said it was like being bowled out LBW in cricket and taking the ball back home. We have to include Belldale Ball, my father and my family's 1980 Melbourne Cup winner of, um, of that uh, just created some great, great stories. After the race, they all went to the team went to uh, Maxime's in Melbourne. My stepmother at the time, Lady Renouf, got on the table, danced and belted out waltzing Matilda. Um, it was one of the greatest, uh, greatest wins my father's ever had and really understood what Australian racing was, was really all about. And it created his investment and the family's investment down here from 1980 onwards. And uh, proudly still have the Melbourne Cup, which is now in the museum in Melbourne. Royal Academy by Nijinsky. He was a 
fantastic, well, sorry. <laughs> Royal Academy by Nijinsky. Won a Breeders' Cup with Lester Piggott on board. Two very quirky stories here with this one. Lester Piggott rode, rode um, Royal Academy to win the Breeders' Cup after he'd been in jail for, um, for tax evasion and uh, came right down the outside and just got the horse across the line. Vincent O'Brien and the team always had tremendous faith in, in Leicester and of course putting him on at the age he was. Anyway, I was actually working for a, a James Capel, which was the biggest investment house in, uh, in, in England at the time in 1980, 1986, uh, six, seven and eight. Rather than backing um, Royal Academy on the, uh, with the bookmakers, we actually bought the shares and uh, did particularly well on buying the shares when he won the Breeders' Cup and he was obviously a flagship for that company. Gil Doran, he won the Ascot Gold Cup twice. One year he had Brent Thompson on board, the other year he had Steve Cawthon on board. But he was an um, absolute war horse and his painting has been sitting in my family home uh, Stone Reese painted it for, for many a year, but Gil Doran, he won the Ascot Gold Cup twice. <music> Maria Mia, the most recent Group 1 winner Swetnam has produced. A homebred, she, she's just won the, the 2023 Galaxy. Sent it to Joe Pride, and Joe Pride had had already enormous success with another, funny enough, another Swetnam homebred in Eduardo. Trained this for the Kelly family of New Haven Park. She showed an enormous amount of promise, and John Kelly, when I spoke to her and said to me, he said, listen, I'll win a group one for you with her. And Julie collected, funny enough, Toronado had only had won 2022 um, Galaxy with, uh, with uh, Shelby 66, and followed up in 2023 with Maria Mia but uh, a very good uh, addition to the, uh, the signs here at Swetnam. Blackfriars, he was a Danehill out of Kensington Gardens, one of our foundation, foundation mares. Beautiful horse. My father, when he saw him as a yearling, said he had a, had a look of an eagle. Hayes always found it hard to find a two-year-old race for him, but he found a, a nice two-year-old race right at the back end of the season. And there was a bit of controversy with this horse is that uh, basically he was, a, he was an unbeaten derby winner. Um, the controversy only was because we'd actually sold Scenic to Western Australia. The family there were looking for another horse and the industry, breeding industry, didn't want the derby winner. Um, they thought, well, we thought that we couldn't, wouldn't get patronised down here in Victoria with a derby winning horse for, for breeders. So we sent him, we sold him to, for, I think we sold him for a million, a million Aussie to the family who, who took, on, uh, took on Scenic over there in Western Australia. Anyway, he became, I think it was 11 years in a row who was champion Western Australian sire. Could go on forever, but there we go. Short and sweet. Sadler's Wells. Absolute legend. He was bred by my father, and um, I've got to say a little story here. The Dam Ferry Bridge is named after the little bridge in the Isle of Man where we used to live. And every time we used to go across the bridge there, you'd have to say, hello fairies and good night fairies. And as a child, it was uh, something one always remembered. Hello fairies. Anyway, Sadler's Wells, he was, he was a, an amazing racehorse. He, was, he set the dynasty up for my father and the family and, and Coolmore. Um, he himself, he, I'll never forget being there at the races at the time when he won, won, in, uh, won in Ireland at Phoenix Park. But um, Sadler's Wells, he, I mean, the list is endless, but really he is the, the, God, the grandfather of, of most of the, uh, the greatest stallions and especially one being Galileo. Court of Honour. We've got to include him. He was a, um, I bought him actually off uh, Peter Chappellheim and uh, out of Manson in, uh, God, it was for my 30th birthday. And um, I wanted to win the Melbourne Cup and the Melbourne Cup was on my, um, just so happened that year to be on my birthday, the 5th of November. Anyway, Simon Marshall rode him. He actually won the Mooney Valley Cup and uh, also the Mornington Cup. 
and actually I'll never forget when he won the Mornington Cup. I was with my father, and and uh, he was uh, he was at the time he was with Percy Sykes, and we were in a strip club, and uh, Percy Sykes and my father were being fed strawberries and cream by Miss Miss uh, uh, Miss Australia, Miss New Australia. Anyway, my father's eyes didn't deviate when I said to him that Court of Honour was running in the Mornington Cup, and he basically turned around to me. He said, "Fuck off, Adam! Can't you see I'm busy?" Anyway. There we go, Court of Honor. <laughs> now Rory's Jester, he's the reason why I'm here in Victoria. Lovely story for Rory's Jester. Colin Hayes trained him um, for a syndicate. He won the Golden Slipper. Ooh, I think in, uh, I think it was 1980, gosh, what would it have been? It would have been about 80, 85, I think, 85, won the Golden Slipper. He was a very strong forearm, double, double forearm muscle, and he produced some great early precocious two-year-olds. Now, Colin Hayes saw these two-year-olds, these potential in his yearlings, and then decided to go and buy the stallion on behalf of uh, the Swetnam Stud and, uh, and the Hayes family and basically went up to, the, the farm was actually owned by someone called Syrian Vanyan, and it was in the Hunter Valley. But anyway, when, when Colin Hayes phoned up and phoned up my father and said, yes, we bought Rory's Jester, but also we bought a farm because this Czechoslovakian arms dealer, Syrian Vanyan, said, if you're gonna buy Rory's Jester, you've got to buy the farm as well. So we basically purchased a 1500 acre farm. I, I owe a lot to Rory's Jester. He was a, a wonderful horse, I know. Uh, he, he was here for a number of years and, um, and he died on the property and uh, he just, uh, he, he, he certainly set, set uh, my, uh, he, he lit the fire in my belly for, uh, for breeding and for uh, carrying on the tradition of Swetnam Stud and my father Robert Sangster and the Sangster family. <laughs>